Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mark Loeffler Experience. Happy Monday, hope everyone had a great weekend. And of course, the day after I released my video on each party's platform uh, regarding housing, the Liberals put out their housing platform. Of course, you knew it was gonna happen. I mean, they didn't take much of my advice in my video, but it looked like they tried to take some of it. They got a full plan, it, like they can give you their full plan in 90 seconds. Quite, uh, quite quick. Um, they're going to unlock home ownership, build more homes, and protect your rights. Again, because we're in a nanny state and we need to be protected. So again, I just wanted to say thank you for Tony Miller from uh, Ottawa Small Landlord Association. You should check them out on Facebook, whether you're investing in Ottawa or not. Uh, he puts out a lot of good information um, for Ontario investors. He, he basically broke down the um, different platforms and what they're going to do. So I'm just gonna concentrate on liberal today. Uh, we'll build, preserve, or repair 1.4 million homes in the next four years, creating a target of 100,000 middle-class homes by 2024, 2025. I found that interesting. And obviously McLean's thinks that, well, you can see it here. They call it the incoherent jumble that is the liberal housing plan. And just, just this guy, Justin Ling, both the NDP and Conservatives are taking seriously the idea that we need many, many more new homes. And they think, well, the Liberals are clearly not. So they think this is just a talking point for them. Basically, it says in here, this is a pretty scathing article. It's pretty good. Uh, from the parliamentary budget officer took stock of the Liberals' much-touted natural housing strategy and a raft of new measures in their 2021 budget. Uh, so in real terms... The report found that critical housing funding for low-income people is declining. Spending on new construction was delayed and less than promised. It reported that of the actual $70 billion that was supposed to be spent, some 40% is via loans and 30% is actually new money. And found the plan has, since 2017, built just 63,000 new homes. It's like 15,000 a year. I mean, again, check out this article. We'll link it down below for McLean's. Perhaps spooked by their competition, liberals released their plan. Maybe they watched my video on Monday. I don't know. I mean, maybe somebody's head up in the liberal party and they're watching my video to get, get ideas. I like this though. The plan contains a variety of items clearly borrowed from the two other parties, but that doesn't mean it's the best of both worlds. Anyone out there who promises they can fix a housing crisis like this, Trudeau told reporters, doesn't understand the housing crisis. Well, I'm just gonna think Trudeau and the Liberals doesn't look like they understand the housing crisis. I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. I don't know. This, I mean, this is a great article, I don't know. And I think McLean's typically skews towards Liberal, but I don't know. So 1.4 million new homes, right? So that number is bold, ambitious, and necessary, and misleading to the extreme. Oh my goodness, politicians are misleading us? I would never have thunk it. You would have to dig into the Liberals news release to realize they're not promising to build 1.4 million new homes. That number includes units they would build, preserve, or repair. So maybe they preserve 1 million. And again, who knows, right? Like it's, it's so, so obscure. Like that's the problem. It's so obscure. I can say, hey, listen, we're gonna build, I'm going to build 10 million new homes next year. But I have no plan. Well, it really doesn't... Yeah, like I can pick any number. Anyways, they picked 1.4 million in four years. In a policy backgrounder, Libbers reveal that they are proposing 4 billion in new money to construct 100,000 middle-class homes in the next four years. They would also double the national co investment fund which is a curious pledge as the par parliamentary budget officer recently found that the fund only spent half its allocated budget and that fund has built just 12,000 new homes so i mean they say a lot of these things they put out a lot of these proposals they put these budgets together and then here's the problem they're so convoluted and it's so hard to work with them or it doesn't make sense to use that money because it's it, for for example, when they when they said they're gonna lend people their down payment and they're gonna you know take that as equity in the home, 
it's so convoluted. Why would people do that? There, there's ways, way better ways of, of getting into home, home ownership than that. I mean, they really wanted to fix it. They would give a 40 year amortization, 100, 100% loan to people who wanted to buy a home. Like it would just be that easy. Convert empty office spaces. Yes, okay, blah, blah, blah. And again, my thinking is, okay, we might have empty office, office spaces now because of COVID. People are gonna move back in. We're gonna need those office spaces for the service jobs that we have now in Canada. A demand problem. This is McLean's again. Increasing supply only makes a difference if you can temper an increase in demand. Right. So how do we increase the temper and demand? Well, we would have to increase interest rates. Uh, we would have to make it really hard for people to get mortgages. And that, what would that do? Like, less people aren't going to live in Canada. Well, maybe. I've heard some people talk about leaving Canada. But it's not going to help a first-time home buyer to make it harder for people to get mortgages. But, you know, he talks about a first-time home buyer's tax credit. Well, that's going to put more people into the market. It's going to increase demand when we're not fixing supply. So... What, like, again, we, we take from one end, we put to the other, and, like, in the, there's no give and take. It's all, well, it is. Like, we're shorter on the supply side, higher on the demand side. We keep pushing demand side. Talking about first-time home buyers, yeah, but that increases demand. Anyways, like, this is my favorite part. The Home Buyer's Bill of Rights. Liberals are pitching some smart measures that could cool price growth, including a proposed ban on blind bidding, where prospective home buyers need to submit their offers without knowing the bids already made. We know what blind bidding is, which has encouraged buyers to pay significantly above asking price. Well, again, we've talked about asking price not be really being asking price. You know, I can list the price house for $1. Is it worth $1? No, it's a marketing ploy for that property to get attention for that property. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And, you know, that's part of the home buyer's bill of rights, which would expand transparency elsewhere in the home buying market. So, again, well, this is funny. It's a good, it's a good set of ideas, McLean says, although it's unclear how any of it is federal jurisdiction. Right. So, for, first off, they don't really have rights to do this, I guess. And in other areas where they've done it, say Australia, they don't have blind bidding. They have open bidding. Home prices have soared. Again, it will here too. If I have to go to a front lawn to, to go to the auction, that's what I'm gonna do rather than just do blind bidding. Uh, crackdown on foreign investors, we got it. Two year ban is basically what the liberal or the conservative said. The rent to own program I thought was pretty interesting. Obviously having uh, been the author of investing in rent to own properties, a complete Canadian guide. I know a thing or two about it. Uh, and from what I've read is basically they want landlords to charge below market rent and give part of that back as a, as a down payment, unless they're going to totally incentivize a, an investor to do that. I don't see why you would. And to be honest with you in a hot market like Ontario rent to own to me, doesn't make a lot of sense right now, unless we're going to get an appraised value at the home at the end of the day. And if that's the case, the renters aren't going to have enough down payment. What they should do is they should work with CMHC to have a program exiting rent own tenants into a CMHC program. That's what they should do, but they won't because this is like very minuscule part of the market. And this just sounds good in, in, uh, you know, in press conferences. That's what it does. You know, again, just to go back to the, the increasing housing units, you know, some, some municipalities have. Vancouver has, which, again, they're landlocked, so they're going up. Uh, Calgary stayed the same. Winnipeg's pretty level. Toronto, Hamilton have both, you know, lost over the last uh, 10 years. And I would guess that's due to nimbianism and not in my backyard and protectionism. And they just don't want to build up, which, you know, Hamilton, I think, is getting better there. But who knows? Ottawa has seen a pretty uh, significant decline. Montreal is pretty level. Quebec City has actually gained per thousand residents. Kitchener Waterloo has really dropped. And Edmonton, obviously, uh, pretty level. Anyways, 
my thoughts on the liberal housing plan. I think that they're pandering to an Ontario audience here. I don't think a lot of the, 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 the country has the same issues. Um, and obviously it was released in Hamilton, Ontario, where obviously bidding wars are still a thing. And, you know, they're, they're, they're pandering to, to those people. Like, it, it's, that's all it is. It makes zero sense. I don't even think they have economists that they're working with. I think they're just like, oh, what sounds the best? I don't know. Again, maybe you should hire the guy from Scotiabank to Jean-Francois Perrault, the senior vice president, chief economist. You know, he has some good ideas. Just putting that out there. Anyways, everyone, thanks so much. We'll see you guys on Thursday.